everybody, this is Stephanie Pickard with Guitar Control, and today we're gonna go over beginning guitar. So these are all topics that you guys have sent in. Thank you so much for sending them in. It's cool to see the same people here every week. I really appreciate it. Um, as always, if you have a topic that you wanna learn, go ahead and send it in. So we're doing topics that you are sending in. You might see them here with a live stream with me, or you might see them on our YouTube channel. So if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, make sure you go to youtube.com slash guitar control and click subscribe. So when you subscribe to us, there's a little bell under the name. And if you click that bell, you'll get a notification when we go live. So um, for beginning guitar, I know we're gonna get a lot of different levels here. So if you aren't a beginner, what I would say, my best advice would be to treat this as if you're going to become a teacher, if you would want a kind of example of a first lesson to give, or you know, sometimes when you're advanced, it's hard to remember what it was like. And for me, teaching was a huge eye opener, you know, because after a certain amount of steps, you kind of forget all the little tiny ones. So the biggest, biggest advice I have is that when you are first teaching is to really try to remember what it felt like. Um, and let me know if you guys can see me. I'm gonna check if you can see me really quick. So I'm gonna say hi to you guys on YouTube and on Facebook, and hopefully you can see me and then we'll definitely get started. But yes, thank you for sending these in. I really appreciate it, and it's always cool to see you guys. All right. Hi, Mr. Pirate Brain. I'm doing well, thank you. Hi, Edward. All right, so YouTube, we are good. If you are on Facebook, say hi, and we'll make sure it looks like it is working. So, cool. I hope it's working. Let's see. Make sure you say hi if you're on Facebook. So I'm gonna refresh Facebook. Uh, it always takes a second longer there. But yes, so what I was saying was subscribe to our YouTube channel, check that out, uh, free videos every day, and remember, leave comments about topics you guys would like to do. But for beginner guitar, if you are a beginner, feel free to ask me questions throughout the whole lesson. I know that I do a Q&A at the end, but that can kind of be whatever questions. So if you have any questions that totally apply to a beginner guitar, you have questions, please ask them. Um, but I'm going to approach this as if I were teaching. So if you are advanced and you're trying to become a teacher, I would kind of take note of that and see how that is. All right, it looks like it's working. So cool. So when I very first teach someone, hi Raymond, awesome, it is working. So when I very first teach someone that is super beginner, um, I mean, honestly, like really, really beginner, you have to think about everything. I won't go that in depth because I think a lot of you, if you're following these channels, you're pretty into guitar, so you probably know, uh, you know, you know a bit, but this was turned in by one of you, so there's probably more of you too. So when I very, very first, like total beginner, you even have to describe how to hold the guitar. So the guitar has a, you know, a little I don't know, divot, you call it, and it looks like a knee, and that's because it goes on your knee. So it should fit comfortably on your body. Either leg is fine. I know some people like it on their left leg if you're right-handed, um, because when you stand up, it's kind of more realistic, but I, I change, I guess, from time to time, but um, I keep it on my right. Unless I am have a footstool, I'm not very tall, so sometimes I use a little footstool and I can kind of prop it up like classical style. That's also a really cool way to practice. But also, one thing I try to tell people that are just starting out, and really anybody of any level, is that if it's comfortable for you, then do it. You know, guitar should be effortless. It should not hurt, it should not, um, feel uncomfortable. Everything should be natural. Like the way that I approach the guitar is my arm is all in line with itself. So even when I do stuff like speed picking, you'll see that I'm not using much effort to even do it. And I use that like open palm approach. Some people don't. There's about three different ways. People kind of have a closed fist um, when they're picking. I don't like that one as much. I, I can do it, but I don't like it. The one I really don't like, but some people do, and I think it's the one that John Petrucci does, so obviously he's awesome, so you can't be wrong, is to have a finger planted. I don't like that. I, can't, I feel like I can't reach. Yeah, I can't reach, so I would not do that, but that's me. So that's also the thing is, you know, like in anything, everybody's different. So I can give you some general advice, but you're gonna have to mold it to yourself. Um, but the advice that goes for everybody is to be comfortable. So, <coughs> excuse me, when I'm playing, I don't have, like, I don't have any strain. So even rhythmically, if I'm playing something. So 
so you'll notice my wrist is really loose. In both techniques. And if it's not, the way that I practice it, I'll approach it and slow it down and then build it up and, and so on and so on. But obviously that's not super beginner, so let's go back to that. I'm gonna check in on you guys, make sure you guys can see me okay. Um, and let's make sure we're good. So yes, when you're very, very first starting out, obviously it's gonna be way less than that, but you're gonna be talking about, oh, has teaching helped my playing? Yes, teaching has very much so helped my playing because it's forced me to learn answers to questions I maybe didn't know when I was starting out. Um, and it made me realize how important some things were and how unimportant some things are, I guess. But it also made me constantly analyze myself. So if you're kind of always analyzing yourself and you're teaching somebody, you're putting a lot of thought into that. So the advice you're giving, you're making sure everything's accurate and you're paying a lot more attention. So um, for me, teaching it definitely, definitely helped. And it always keeps me warmed up. So I like that. And it kind of always keeps you learning. I know that sounds kind of funny, but it does. And can open your mind to other genres of music too. So that was helpful for me. Um, oh, that's awesome. Hi, uh, and Cisco. That's okay. I'm glad you caught up today. So I'll be back here Thursday at 7 central with a new topic, a different topic from you guys. So usually every Tuesday and Thursday at 7 central. So make sure you tune in and hang out. Um, all right. So again, the way I would approach someone just starting out, we'll do it quickly because I know you guys always want me to play more than talk. So let's do it as quick as possible. And I picked a couple beginning songs, but I also picked one that um, even if you're advanced, I think you'll just like. So why not? Um, who doesn't like Wholesome Friends and Blues by Johnny Cash? So, um, okay. If you tell someone how to hold the guitar, you try to make a big point about telling them to be relaxed. Like, you know, if you're, I know I had little kinks and stuff when I first started playing, like I'd always put my arm up like this and my teacher was a lot funnier than me. He just told me that I didn't look cool and so I couldn't do that. But besides not looking cool, it also isn't good for you. I, I could get hurt doing that. Um, so you wanna have proper technique and you wanna just do things right the first time. So it's really tempting to just dive into something and say, you saw me do that and you're like, and you're like, well, I can do that too, or I wanna do that, or something like that, and you can't yet, or you haven't put the time in. You know, I to play fast, I put a lot of time in, and I had like a little notebook that I would keep track of, my BPM, and I use my metronome, my egg timer, and I practice, practice, practice. So it's easy now, but it wasn't always easy. You know, and for me, like sweet picking is something that I pay more attention to because it's not as natural to me. So again, under topics of things that aren't as easy for some people as others. So um, slow things down, right? Slow it down and do it right the first time. Kind of like exercising. If you try to do an exercise and you're not doing it right and you just keep doing it, you're not really gonna get the results you would get if you slowed down and did it right. So make sure you slow down and do it right the first time. Get that technique down and then move on. So um, proper picking. So for me, when I first started out, I did not have proper picking and I was kind of turned inward like this and I was fast, but I wasn't accurate. And so that's not really great. <laughs> you know, it's, I guess, cool. It was cool when I was really little and no one cared, I guess, but it's not cool when it's not like you're a little kid and they think it's cute or something. <laughs> so don't do that. So work it up. Hi, Giovanni. Um, so work it up and hi Terry awesome so work it up slow to fast you know I know what you're playing like you know so just I added one note but know what you're doing slow to fast um, also so if you're really teaching someone and like say you're really advanced and you're giving your first guitar lesson I have uh, mentor teachers that were coming in for me or leaving or helped them uh, you know at studios that I've worked at and it is awkward you know when you very first start teaching it's kind of weird because you might know this super killer lick or these super hard things but you don't know how to explain things that aren't those things to somebody else so you might not even fathom that someone might not know how to hold the guitar um, you know, like I had a student once I walked in and she had her guitar backward and facing the wrong direction. And, you know, you also have to have a lot of patience because she would tell me, well, this is how you told me to hold it. And I'd say, you know, no, I didn't. Let's try to do this. And so being really, really patient and remembering that it was hard for you too. So 
telling someone how to just hold the guitar, describing the parts of the guitar, the bridge, the pickups, you know, treble switch and the fretboard, um, or your toggle switch, I guess, but you know, from treble to rhythm. Um, and this is the fretboard, the strings, obviously the strings, describing how you're switching between pickups, tuning pegs, the note names, E, A, D, G, B, E. Um, I used to use a different trick, but I kind of like this trick. So Elvis always drives good BMWs everywhere. It's not the best English, but it is memorable. So that's a good one. Or elephants and dogs or donkeys grow big ears. So E, A, D, G, B, E. Describing how to use a tuner. We're not going to do that, but describing how to use a tuner, describing even just simple rhythmic, like here's a whole note and practicing going one, two, three, four, stop. You know, little things like that. But for me, the best thing I've ever done when I'm first teaching someone is giving them something to look forward to practicing. So like a lot of exercises aren't really fun, you know, and if you're not really in a guitar and not everybody is, and I guess the best advice I can give you if you're teaching is that not every student wants to play like you or likes the same music as you or wants to do anything near what you wanna do. So you really have to have no ego and you have to approach it and ask them what they want to do and find a custom plan on how to get them where they want to go. So if you get someone that really just wants to play a few chords and sing, then you help them any way you can get to those few chords and sing. Even if it's playing along their favorite favorite song and say say it was like Smells Like Teen Spirit, which is just four, you know, power chords. <laughs> But say, I mean, I know that's not singing and playing, but here's just an example. Say they really can't do that, but that's the song that they love and that's what they would go home and practice. They're not gonna practice like these picking exercises, right? So you can show them that and you can encourage it, but what you can do is help them get there any step they can. So as long as they're improving every week and you're helping them get there, that is the best thing to do. So I would go, all right, so we're gonna build up to that chord. You can't do that chord yet, which is okay, but we're gonna take one finger, we're gonna play one note, and we're just gonna go. And you have them play along with the record, you encourage them to just kind of get along to it, and then next week, you do two. So simplifying things and making them you know, obtainable. So not making it so far out of reach that they're not gonna be able to do it. Giving them some hope and showing them they can see that a song is forming. The other thing I do is instead of giving them like a quasi-chromatic thing like I did earlier, is I will just show them Smoke on the Water, but I won't play it in the normal position. You know, I won't do the... I'll do it here. Because that's the easiest string to play because you're not going to accidentally be bumping into anything else. Uh, most people know that song. I guess now it's changing, but most people do know that song or it's just obtainable. So that's a really good one to use. So just patiently going, all right, let's just try this and think of it as three parts. And first we're going to go open, three, five, and describe to them that the way a guitar works, the way that guitarists typically communicate with one another if they're not talking in notes is tab. Show them how to read tab. Show them six, five, four, three, two, one. Show them on the tab, I guess, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six is how it would be if you're looking at it. And explain that you're just writing the fret number on the string. So kind of like how if you had a map and you went this many degrees and this many degrees and you met where you needed to be, that's how you're going to read tablature, right? You're going to write on the sixth string only. So describe to them, this is only the sixth string because you're just trying to isolate things and make it simple. You're gonna go open, which is also zero, which means no fingers, third fret, fifth fret. And don't even bother different fingers in the beginning, just, that's it. Open, three, five, all right? So you're gonna go open, three, five. Next, you're gonna go open, three, six, five. All right, so open, three, six, five. So try that. Um, I would also suggest just doing one finger. Oops, I'm gonna grab this wire really quick, sorry. I don't wanna lose you guys. So, open, three, five, open, three, six, five. I'm using my pinky. If they can do that, awesome. If they can't, that's okay too. So no stress on that. Um, then open three, five, 
three, open. And try to describe to them to see things in patterns. So the last one went up and then down, right? So make things simple, simplify them. So the first one is open three, five. The next one is so similar, right? Open three, same thing. Make sure you tell them that's the same thing. But then go to six, five. So almost the same, but we put a six before a five. And the last one is up and down. And usually that makes people excited. They feel like they came out of a lesson playing something and they, you know, went from knowing nothing to knowing something. So that's really encouraging. And I usually show them that, you know, there's three different things or not three different things, but there's about three different styles you're going to want to do. You're going to want to do melodies or you're going to want to do chords. So I show them how to read a chord. I describe that if you were to pick the notes individually, that'd be arpeggiating it. And if they can, you can show them a scale, and I would recommend the pentatonic scale. So, And then, um, you know, a another beginner topic, maybe not a first lesson topic, would be trying to introduce them how to solo or playing a game with them. That's kind of like a rhythmic game and saying, okay, I know that this scale is hard when you look at it all at once and you're just starting out so what if we just took one string the third string say and go five seven so i did that in a i mean you can do it anywhere i just think a is visually easy because it's kind of in the middle so we're gonna go third string only and you just play something and try to get them to play it i mean first you probably play something simpler like and maybe don't let them look at you and have them try to do it. Then change up the rhythm. You know, and just kind of try to make it not complicated, but go back and forth between those two notes and kind of change things up and have them try to, by ear, re like replicate what you're doing. So imitate it. Um, then if, you know, you are teaching soloing and beginning, you can try to have them make it as interesting as possible. So just limiting them, then you can bring in a couple more strings. And then you can bring in more, and then more, 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 and then everything. So just kind of building people up to something is what I would say. All right, we're already about 17 minutes in, so I'm going to check on you guys. Um, if you have any questions, please ask them. All right, I'm going to check in on YouTube. <laughs> Everybody has, uh, that's awesome. Everybody has some tricks that they, I've never heard any of these. I have heard Eddie ate dynamite, but I, I feel like it's not something you say to kids. <laughs> I don't think it's polite. Let's see. I know this is random, but do you know what kind of finish is on your guitar? I don't. Like glitter, I don't actually know what they used. I was given this guitar kind of spur of the moment, and um, the guy at ESP introduced me to my fiance, which is cool. And, um, he gave me this guitar, so it's pretty cool. Um, and I use it all the time. I don't know what the finish is, but you can't feel the glitter. It's a clear coat. But it is very cool. But I could not tell you exactly what it is or anything like that. But it's cool. Um, thank you, Mitch. I am using an Axe FX, so I guess I'm always in front of it, and it kind of confuses you guys. But I am using Axe FX, so well, I don't know how to do it. There. There. Oh, no. Oh, I don't know. It's confusing with the camera. There. <laughs> so I'm using Axe FX2. Um, and then that's my power, that's my preamp, sorry. And then my power amp is a matrix. So it's got tubes in it. And I just kind of like the way it sounds when I was trying to find my power amps. I Googled a bunch of stuff and I just thought that sounded the coolest. So I use that and I'm going through a Mesa Boogie Road King cab. So that's my setup. The oranges are Stevens. So I know it looks like I'm using those, but those are awesome too. Let's see, what's the best way to set up a schedule for beginners? Um, so TJ, it depends. To me, I always suggest that you run into everything. So sometimes you run into people that love guitar and you don't have to tell them to practice and they will practice a million times a day and they will be so happy and it will be wonderful. And other times you run into someone where that's like pulling teeth and they hate it or their parents think they need to force them to play every day. I remember when I went to MI, people, the teachers would even say, sometimes just take the weekend off. Like sometimes take a second away. And I don't always feel like I need that, but if you're overdoing it, sometimes stepping away for a little while is good. But I would say set a goal. So if you're the type of person that a little each day is good, do a little each day. And your brain can only really take in about 30 minutes of new information at a time. So maybe set that goal. Or even quality of practice is better than quantity. Like if you just turn off your phone and turn off the computer and slowly 
worked on something, it would be shocking to you how much better you got. So if you focus, it could be tiny amounts. But I would say the best schedule is to make something realistic. Or sometimes for me, I'm the type of person where I like to overshoot because then if I fall a little bit behind, I'm still happy because I still feel like I did a really good job. So if I'm like, every day I'm going to do this, and then I miss one day or something, then I'm still in pretty good shape. So that works for me. But whatever your personality is, kind of try to think of it like that. You know, so for students, I'll suggest three to four days a week or, or every day for 15 minutes or 30 minutes, depending on the person and depending on what they're learning and their age. I hope that helps. Um... Oh, <laughs> that's funny. Thank you. What is the best way to memorize the fretboard? So I've been asked this a couple times. Um, it depends. There's a couple different techniques. So in a previous lesson, I showed you guys the note game. I think the note game is really cool where you just find all of the A's on the guitar. You do not play an open note though. You Like you wouldn't play the fifth string open for A. You would play the 12th fret, but you also don't go past the 12th fret. And you just kind of learn which notes are which. So for the sixth string, you'd have your first A on the fifth fret. So you go A, A, and then, you know, I told you no open. So on the fifth, you go 12, and then octave, if you know an octave shape, you'd go to the octave on the fourth string, seventh fret, and then the open G string would bring you to an A on the second fret, and then on the second string, the tenth fret, and then first and sixth are the same. Five. So you go A, 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 and then you do B, then C, then D, or or you could put them in a hat and mix them up and pick a note randomly, or just pick a note randomly. Um, I think that's pretty helpful. Another way is logically thinking about it. So if you know any theory at all, or if you're just getting started. We talked about knowing the, the strings, the open names. You have to know the open names. Even if you don't know theory, you have to know that because if you use a tuner, they use the string names anyways. So um, I did Elvis always drives good, BMWs everywhere. We had a bunch of other funny ones too, so you guys can list your ones if you know them. But um, E, so think about theory. On the piano, there's just a couple spots where there's a natural half step, right? And it's very clear on a piano because it's black and white. So on the spots where we have no uh, black key, those are called natural half steps. So the distance between them is just right next to each other. There is no such thing, and that's B and C and E and F. So there's no such thing as a B sharp, you just call it C. And there's no such thing as a C flat, it would just be B. And same with E and F. So no E sharp or no F flat. It's just E would be E sharp would be F, right? You don't ever say that. So on the guitar, the way that that would apply is that when you move something in intervals, so when I move on my guitar, and I know that this is an open E, I would go E, and then F would be right next to it, because that's um, minor second, right? So it sounds like Jaws. We've talked about that before, too. And then a major second sounds like Happy Birthday. So um, in this case, that was a really heavy sounding Happy Birthday. But in this case, we go E, F, F sharp, or G flat, G, G sharp, or A flat, A, and then you can kind of walk up that way. And remember that everything repeats at 12. So the guitar, on the guitar, that's your second octave. So just remember that that's another way to find it, and you can do that on any string. As long as you apply that theory of uh, the musical alphabet being A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and E and F not having anything between them, and same with B and C. So if that makes sense to you, I think that's also a great way to learn them, and I would say definitely learn them on the sixth and fifth string at least. So. You, you just have to because that way you can easily find things too. like easily uh, read in a chart you have different options and I think it's really helpful um hi Ben good morning from Denmark oh my gosh it's totally different for you um the thing that makes young guitar players get good is because they can stay in their room for six hours a day that's true to an extent but I mean sometimes I feel like when you start younger I always like really wished I had started when I was five or something insane, but I knew people that did and they just got burned out or they didn't like it. So, you know, I excelled fast when I started, um, you know, when I was a teenager and, sorry, there's a hair in my face, when I was a teenager and um, I was so into it that I was able to spend a lot of time, but you can still, if you just have focused time, you can go a long way. And if you just take some of these tips, you can go a long way at any age. Um, so what do you do with the lazy students? 
It depends. Um, it can be difficult. So it, just remember patience and remember that you never know. Like if you're asking me as a teacher, what do I do? If someone's driving me crazy in a lesson and they are just like not listening or they don't care, it can be really stressful. And it's, but you have to put yourself in someone else's shoes. So I think the really good thing about it is it's going to make you a much more patient person. And sometimes you're kind of a therapist because people ask you a lot of questions. I have nothing to do with the guitar. Um, I remember my dad used to tease me about that um, because, you know, there's the things you get asked or it's people's outlet. So I, I try to approach it as it's their outlet and encourage them. So if they're really lazy, I try to just do anything to get them one step closer. So like I explained earlier, if they can't play that chord, we just do the bass note and then we build up to it. But try to motivate them. So also asking them what they want to learn because sometimes I've seen a lot of teachers like I remember... This one teacher tried to teach, we had the same student, it was my student, and I was gone, and the student went to this other teacher for one lesson, and he, the student was kind of a sensitive kid that liked to play singer-songwriter stuff, like a capo, very pop, very Disney songs, and I had a sub, and the sub loved Meshuggah, and tried to show the child Meshuggah, and explain that, like, that's the way to life, and that stuff's not cool and it's just that's not a way to get anybody to want to learn anything you can show them something and say hey this is something totally different that someone did on the guitar and inspire them but never try to make someone feel bad for what they like i would say or try to convince them to like something else try to find what they like and then you'll find that they'll want to practice so especially like people ask me a lot about how do i know what guitar to buy or something like that and it's like go to a guitar shop and put that guitar in your lap and if you like that guitar you will play that guitar if it feels good to you you will play it like get the guitar that makes you excited to practice that's my suggestion um how did you get motivated i got really hyped when i got my strat but fell off the wagon i get motivated because i like the challenge of things on guitar i guess that's what motivated me is that um, I really love playing guitar and you know I'm a human too and just like everybody else sometimes maybe I you know especially before when I was first starting out I would maybe not want to practice but every time I practiced I really enjoyed it so I think sometimes you'll find that I think it's a lot like working out like you might not want to work out at all but you always feel better right so it's good for you and also for me, what really kept me motivated was when I started playing what I wanted to play and getting my own sound. So when I started improvising and learning that I could just, you know. Like the creative part of the guitar really inspired me. Whoops, sorry. And just like how a bend sounds. I don't know, just the sounds that I could create and how, you know, you can learn a lot, but also just the freedom of being creative and using it as an outlet really, really, really inspired me. So that kept me motivated and still does keep me motivated. Um, let's see. My students will learn what I teach them because I always ask what their interests are. The problem is that they are lazy. I don't judge them. We'll learn what I teach them because I always ask. I'm not sure I understand that completely. I think if someone is just not having it, I'll maybe talk to their parents too, depending on how old they are, and say, hey, why don't you guys listen to some songs this weekend and find one that that kid loves? And that can help a lot too. So I think you can inspire anybody because I think there is some kind of music. There's so much different kind of music. And remember, the guitar can emulate anything. If they love a saxophone part, you can figure that out on the guitar and you can show them. And I remember a cool Paul Gilbert quote that I really liked was, he was just, I, I mean, I don't remember the quote exactly, but he was talking about how the guitar is the only instrument that you can just go. I mean, a keyboard, I know you can kind of emulate it, but it doesn't have that life that a guitar has. Like a guitar has so much emotion and so much creativity that you can really throw that in. Oh my gosh, we're already at 30 minutes. Almost, we have like 50 seconds, so I need to check on Facebook. Um, I think walk up the pentatonic scale on the neck. On the G string is good for beginners. That is a good way. <laughs> MM, that's funny. Hi, Robert. All right, so 
Um, we are actually almost done. So those are my tips. I did say I'd teach you Folsom Prison Blues, so I'm gonna try and do that, but I'm also gonna give you, uh, I'm gonna try and do it like as fast as possible, but it's pretty easy, so that's cool. But I'm gonna give you guys a special discount code for hanging out with me, and this actually kind of coincides with what I was saying, um, so that's really cool. So this code is for our Killer Guitar Control Secrets. It is a discount code for you guys for tuning in today and hanging out with me. So this is all about playing from the heart, and you were asking me what keeps me motivated. And for me, what keeps me motivated is playing from my heart and really creating new sounds and just the creative outlet that the guitar really is. So, I mean, I like learning other people's stuff, don't get me wrong, but for me, what really keeps me going is chasing that next thing I'm gonna write or what am I gonna do next or that's what really keeps me going. And I think if you do that, you'll really open up and you'll realize that that would keep you going too. So this DVD is very cool. It's all about playing from your heart and it's all about finding your voice. So hearing the music in your head and getting it out of your hand. So it's gonna go over three things. It's gonna go over technique, which is all the kind of cool shred stuff we show and kind of things that color what you're playing. It's gonna cover fretboard knowledge, which is scales, notes, arpeggios, and then it's going to cover hand-brain connection. So getting what's in your brain out of your hands. So check out this discount code and get your copy today. So this is very, very cool. And yes, um, I like this because it's a totally different approach than if you got a magazine that was just teaching you how to play like everybody else, or you're looking up a tab because you don't wanna just copy somebody else. I mean, what what is that? You know, you wouldn't want to go see a guitar player that sounds just like somebody else because you could have just seen that guitar player. So that's kind of what this is about. This is about being you and finding your own voice. So check out that code. That is a discount code for you guys today. Make sure you check out um, guitarcontrol.com. Make sure that you also subscribe to our YouTube channel and say hi, let us know that you did it. Um, we have all the videos that I've done and the other instructors on our YouTube channel and we have new free videos every day. Let's see, I used to play four hours a day, but got sick of it, now it's hard to even stay focused. I think, oh, thank you, Raymond, that's really nice of you. Um, I think that it is hard for everybody to stay focused because you're a human, but try and find new things that inspire you all the time. So maybe instead of practicing for four hours a day, or if you're just playing, maybe try learning something new. So if you're just playing, I would try practicing even for 15 minutes a day and just finding something new that's challenging, that pushes you. And sometimes it can be something that's not necessarily harder, it's just totally different than what you're used to, or giving yourself a challenge. Um, but if you're practicing for four hours a day, maybe try jamming with somebody else. I think that that's something really cool. Hi Chuck, that's okay. Um, you can actually watch this video again on YouTube or you can watch it here. Um, hi Perry, it's actually a lesson, so people do talk. That is like my least favorite comment, sorry guys. That is the most annoying thing, because as a teacher, you are instructing, so I'm not here to show off, I'm here to talk to you guys and explain things. But yes, I did play, so if you just tuned in, I played several times. But um, yeah, it's about teaching and describing something and learning. So that's what a lesson is. <laughs> Sorry, just the most annoying comment. But, um, and it's, you could say it in a nicer way if you want someone to play. But um, I'm going to show you guys that Johnny Cash riff because this is a good beginner example. I'm gonna give you my beginner example tips. We are actually in Q&A time, so feel free to ask me questions and I will address them as we go. I just kinda wanna throw these out for you too. Um, I can, Chuck, that's so weird. But, um, there you go. So um, the tips I was gonna give you though are I was going to go over some of the songs that I show people when they are first starting out. So I usually use, I told you, um, I use Smoke in the Water, but I don't play it in the right position. I don't play it here because that's harder for people. So I play it here. And just that riff, because the other riff kind of throws, um, at least I've noticed kind of throws kids off. So just that riff as an exercise to get going. Another one, well, actually, another one is Sunshine of Your Love would be a great one to do, but I also usually next would do like Satisfaction. Because it's also all on one string. Um, or Seven Nation Army. Right, and people really seem to like that one because that little fancy part, so I call that normal and I call this fancy. A kind of cool, simple song that I thought people of all levels would enjoy 
is the Johnny Cash Folsom Prison Blues. So go ahead and start asking the questions because we are gonna run out of time. So this is Q&A time, but because I said I would do it, I just wanna do it. So um, a cool kind of all around song to kind of show people, this is really low for my vocal range, but I like Folsom Prison, Prison Blues. So this little beginning riff is really cool. <laughs> And people just kind of like it. I think everybody likes it. So it's just a really good one. So all I'm doing, and it to me it kind of reminds me of a C shape, but it's not. Or I guess, you know, top of an F. But obviously not in that position. So I put my middle finger, but the way your fingers are laid out. So I put my middle finger on the fifth string, second fret. Three times. Then my pointer on the fourth string, first fret. Two times back to the fifth string, second fret, and then I do this bend to open on the G note, so the sixth string, third fret. And it kind of introduces some easy chords, just an E major, um, an E7 actually, where you just lift up that finger, the octave, to bring it to a seven, an A major, and then a kind of challenging one, the B7, but a fun one, so the... No, I can't think it's too low. Down the bend. And I don't think that I'm chatting. I don't know when. Well, I'm stuck in Folsom Prison. Right? So that's why I like that one. But I really just want to show you guys that lick. So. That's a good one, too. So all of those songs are great for beginners because they're not too crazy. Um. Uh, okay, Chuck. Your hand won't stretch that far. For which part? for just that one lick. Sometimes, okay, so people that always say that their hand can't stretch far, um, usually it's actually your thumb placement. So where your thumb is has a lot to do with it. So when I do like that fast stuff, my thumb is really low and it gives me a lot of reach. It's actually, well, it's kind of in the middle, but to the lower side. So it gives me a lot of reach. And it kind of lets me have my hands in a proper technique and it's just a lot easier. But sometimes I have my thumb up here if I'm playing a chord. So thumb placement. If you feel like you can't reach something, it's probably your thumb. So just check your thumb and you'll probably be able to do it or change, you know, what you're doing. Because, I mean, I don't really have that problem, so I would make sure that it's where your thumb is. I used to think that too. So thumb and wrist. Cool. Glad. All right, so now it's Q&A time, so feel free to ask me questions. Again, check out that DVD. I will leave that code for you guys one more time. So this is our Killer Guitar Control Secrets. It is all about playing from the heart and getting the voice that you want out of the guitar. So not sounding like somebody else, sounding like you. So check that out. I'm gonna leave it on both platforms. So this is going to YouTube and Facebook. Um, if you're on Facebook and you haven't checked, our YouTube, please check our YouTube and subscribe. If, you know, vice versa, please go to our Facebook and like our page. So let's see, is satisfaction actually put on one string? Yes, that part is, but not the chords um, when it comes in later. I recently came across, oh, that's awesome. I have not heard that cover, but I'm sure it's great. Uh, thank you. That's very awesome. I appreciate that. That's very cool. Um, awesome, so here's Q&A time, so feel free to ask me questions. We are kind of at the end of the lesson. But yeah, feel free to ask me questions. So the biggest tip I think you can walk away with, Chuck, that was a great question. When you feel like you can't stretch, really do check your thumb, because seriously, like it's like nine out of 10 times it is your thumb placement, and your wrist should look good. Like I know that sounds kind of funny, but the way that your wrist is, everything should look really natural and nothing should hurt. So make sure that the way that you are is just always... really easy like my wrist is never like this or something if it looks painful it probably is painful and don't do it what strings are the best for beginners I always it depends I like tens I think tens are a nice alternative I think they have good tone and you don't sacrifice stuff and I use tens unless I tune down I go up a gauge I would say nines if you find it really difficult but if you can get away with tens I would do tens but nines aren't a bad option I mean, Yngwie uses like eights, right, or something, so. And he's incredible, so there you go. 
Oh, thank you, Mr. Pipe Brain. That's cool. I appreciate that. Um, all along the watchtower would be an awesome one to do. I got to do a ton of Hendrix lessons. So if you guys are Hendrix fans, I know that's Bob Dylan too, but if you're Hendrix fans, check out our YouTube because I have like a whole playlist, a ton of ton of Hendrix lessons. So that's a lot of fun. Uh, and our playlists on our YouTube page are in categories. So they'll be by teacher too. So if you just like one particular teacher, you can go to their folder and learn all their lessons or by topic or genre. So sometimes if it's a warm up, you can go check that out. Or if it's you know, rock songs or metal songs or blues songs or jazz songs. So check that out. We have seriously a ton of everything. There's a few of us that are teachers on there and we're all quite different. So that's really cool. So make sure you check that out. And you know, our YouTube is free. So make sure you click it and then it'll also tell you when we're live. Oh, okay. Um, Oh, okay, what you're saying is that you have students and they will not practice and they leave a whole week without practicing. That is really normal. <laughs> and sometimes they are. Sometimes you're saying that it feels like they're waiting for you to come to practice. Some people are because just try to keep that patience and remember that not everybody loves the guitar the way that you do. And so it's, you know, you don't have to do that. Or sorry, I got mixed up between two different comments. Um, so not everybody loves the guitar the way that you do, and sometimes that might be the only way they practice, but then just make the most out of that time that you two have together in that lesson and just try to get them ahead every week the most you can. I know it's frustrating, but you know, as long as you're making them improve, that is what they're paying you for and that is what they're doing. So I think as long as you're doing that, it's good. But I know it's really frustrating. I've had that too, and it is frustrating. All right, well, it looks like you guys are out of questions. So I'm gonna wrap this up. I appreciate you guys tuning in and hanging out with me. I'm gonna give you your discount code one more time. So make sure you check this out. This is our Killer Guitar Control Secrets, all about playing from the heart. So check this out. You know, for me, I think that's what guitar is all about. Remember that as much as you learn, guitar is still something that should be fun and should be an outlet and music should be fun and should be an outlet. So make sure you check that out. And here is your discount code. So thank you for hanging out with me today. I really appreciate it. And I will see you guys soon. All right. Take care. Thank you. I'll see you Thursday at 7 Central.